Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. In this video I'm going to talk about natural selection and the uh, question today is very easy. I think that most of you would be able to choose the correct answer right away but I want to warn you that not the only one answer is possible here. It depends on the circumstances so do not uh, skip the video because you choose the correct answer but watch the video to the end so you would know what kind of circumstances this is. And today's question is, if natural selection caused both homozygotes for a trait to die in early childhood, the results for the population would be, and here is the four answers to choose from, answer A, extinction, answer B, elimination of the recessive allele in one generation, answer C, only heterozygotes individuals would survive to reproduce, and answer D, only homozygous dominance and heterozygous individuals will survive. So, uh, which answer to choose? First of all, let's uh, make a Punnett square so we would see what would uh, happen in such population. So, uh, on one side we should put one parent whose genotype would be capital A and small a, and on the other side we also should put another um, genotype for the second parent that is going to be capital A, small a, and as you see uh, other genotypes for parents are not possible because parents cannot be whether homozygous recessive or homozygous dominant because uh, according to our problem homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive would die in early childhood so they wouldn't be able to grow until uh, reproduction age. Now, as you see, according to our Punnett square, the progeny genotypes should be as follows. So, two out of four going to be heterozygotes and would survive, and genotype would be the same as their parents, and uh, two out of four would die because of the genotype. And so now let's uh, take a look at our answers. Would this lead to extinction if 50% uh, of the progeny would die? I would say this depends on the circumstances. For example, uh, if you would take uh, animals that has uh, very few progeny and maybe reproduce only once in their lifetime, this may lead to extinction. But uh, for example, if they would have only uh, one, two, three babies, they would probably uh, instinct because um, just take a look what would happen. We have two parents that is both heterozygous and if they would uh, have four uh, members of the progeny, half of them uh, would die and half would survive. So two parents would produce two uh, new uh, members of the population. And this means stability. But, uh, for example, if they would uh, produce only three uh, babies, uh, that means this is going to be a decline. Or two babies, half of them would be normal and half would die. That means two parents produced only one child. And uh, that means that with each generation, uh, new generation would be a half in size of the previous generation. So that means this is going to be extinction. But if we would have four and more, that means such population may uh, survive and even prosper. And you may also ask how this possible that... Uh, such uh, uh, mechanism evolved during the evolution because uh, when half of your progeny would die uh, you probably uh, hard to imagine how this uh, were possible during evolution. I was thinking about this today and I came with such example. Imagine that uh, we have uh, two uh, proteins in hemoglobin uh, that is slightly different 
one would be alpha chain and uh, another one would be beta chain. So together they would make hemoglobin. And these two proteins were arised from only one gene that were duplicated and we call such uh, duplicated genes paralogous. So this is paralogous genes that lie on the uh, chromosome and uh, for example this is going to be centromere and one can be found uh, for example here and uh, another one just next to this gene. And now imagine that one species separated uh, and now we have two populations that is very closely related but in the second uh, species uh, we have a reversion of the of the order of this gene so we have one gene here and another one here and then these two uh, very close relative uh, populations would uh, mate again, once again and they would have a problem here and in order for example uh, successfully to reproduce they should be able to line together uh, perfectly on the whole chromosome order but uh, imagine that uh, second event happened here so this uh, two uh, or one locus were lost. So now we have only one uh, allele here, another one allele here at the same locus. So uh, now what variants possible to uh, heterozygous parents? So this would be genotype of one parent that is heterozygous. Here is a genotype of the second parent who is also heterozygous for this locus, they may uh, produce the progeny as follows. The picture would be the same as this one. But now I'm just using uh, just different colors to represent uh, genes. So here we would have one gene, uh, the same allele. So imagine that uh, hemoglobin would be uh, made by only one type of uh, chain, alpha chain or beta chain. So it wouldn't be functional. And here we would have um, variants with two different alleles in the same locus. So, so of course such a hybrid would be able to reproduce because it has uh, both uh, alleles present so would be able to make a normal hemoglobin and we see that 50% of the progeny would be able to do it and uh, here in the last box we have uh, both alleles uh, that would be found in the progeny and that means they wouldn't be able to make uh, hemoglobin and uh, these two variants eventually die and this was an uh, example with hemoglobin but with plants we may have different proteins when we need two proteins in order to work together so uh, heterozygous would survive and those who is homozygous whether dominant or recessive would die. So as you see answer D only homozygous dominant that is here and heterozygous individuals would survive this is not true so we can cross out this answer. Uh, answer C, only heterozygous uh, individuals would survive and reproduce, this is true. And uh, answer B, elimination of the recessive allele in one generation, this is not true, because without uh, this uh, recessive allele, uh, no progeny would survive. So we can cross out this answer and uh, extinction we also can choose this answer as correct uh, 
it depends on the circumstances. If uh, we have animals that uh, would have limited number of progeny, this may lead to extinction. And uh, if we have animals that uh, reproduce frequently and, ha and have large litter, this may not be the case. But uh, with animals that uh, reproduce uh, only once in their lifetime or would have uh, very few progeny, for example, like we humans or elephants, this might be a problem. But we also have to pay attention to such phrase as early childhood because, uh, for example, if such an event like um, a stillbirth would happen very early in the development of the fetus, this may not affect the decline of the population. But uh, if uh, we would change this phrase to the late childhood, this can make a huge difference because uh, resources to raise a child were spent, time were lost, and uh, you wouldn't be able to reproduce as effectively after a certain time. But if it is in early childhood, uh, most likely this problem can be overcome, especially if it is in the early stage of the development uh, of the fetus. So today I cross out this answer, but you should understand that this is also one of the possible answers. It just depends on the uh, problem itself. So you have to read the problem and uh, analyze it before you would choose the answer. Because, for example, if I would rephrase this problem, uh, the correct answer could be A, extinction. So, this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.